nice to be with you again. When Sister Barb asked me to give a testimony, I have to admit I was a little apprehensive, but I realized I'm not testifying of myself, but rather of the work that God has done in me. So here's my testimony. I confessed Christ before men and angels and was baptized. I thought I was right with God and his Christ, but I wasn't. My thinking hadn't been affected. Therefore, my heart was uncircumcised. I didn't reject God or his Christ. I liked hearing the things of God, but all the seed was falling on ground that, quite frankly, didn't have much earth. Whatever it was that Jesus saw in me, I still don't know. But he was willing to demonstrate his long suffering to me and his mercy. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax he shall not quench till he bring forth judgment unto victory. I was walking around in darkness for years and was blind to it. It wasn't until Jesus proclaimed, and Jesus has to do this, he proclaimed that the appointed time had come to open my prison house and shed his marvelous light on me. My point here is this. You can be baptized, attend church, read the scriptures, and pray. And I did all of the above. But until Jesus sheds his redeeming light into your prison house, it's just words. It's just words. It, I distinctly remember Jesus letting me know he was no respecter of persons and revealed to me just how vile I was before him. When Jesus opened my eyes to the truth of my condition, I fell before him and sobbed. I remember thinking, what have I done? I repented and asked for forgiveness and true to his word, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Though my sins are many, Jesus forgave me all my sins and said, go and sin no more. That moment, I felt the chains of bondage, the chains that I carried for 37 years fall off my shoulders. Amen. I had been set free. My thinking had now been corrected. My conscience had been purged from dead works. I was being transformed by the renewing of my mind. My heart, now circumcised, I now possessed the light of life. He has done for me which, no, which none but God could do. He took away my stubborn will, melted my heart that was adamant, he turned my mourning into laughter and my desolation into joy. He led my captivity captive and made my heart rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I can bear testimony that Christ is the only begotten of the Father. It is Christ and Christ alone that has reconciled me through his blood by faith back to the Father who created me. The Lord raised me up out of the ashes, and I can speak this of a truth. There is a balm in Gilead. Amen. I took time to pause. The Lord could have given me over to a reprobate mind, given me over to strong delusion which couldn't be recovered from, cast me away. He could have taken my breath and required my soul. I would have physically died, of course, but ultimately be cast out into utter darkness only to hear the eternal haunting words, depart from me, I never knew you. And God would have been right and just to do so. But God, 
Oh, how I love these words. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Amen. Back then, I confess, I was not worthy to have Christ's spittle to land on me. I'm still not worthy of myself. But now I can speak these words with confidence. I am covered by the blood of the Lamb. I am accepted in the beloved, and I praise God for that. Amen. Jesus left the ninety and nine and came for me, the sheep that was lost, sick, and ready to die, and brought me back to the fold. For one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, Christ, shall many be made righteous. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. My blessed Savior healed my sin-sick soul and made me every whit whole. The very things that were once just words now have substance. They now have meaning to me, something my heart, mind, and soul can get a hold of. Instead of darkness, I now have light. My eyes are no longer closed but open. My ears are no longer dull of hearing, for they hear. I have joy I had never experienced, a desire for God and his Christ I never had before. It is pure jubilance. The joys unspeakable and full of glory that exudes from this condition I myself cannot find the words. So let me borrow the words of the psalmist when he said, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. They're sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And with my whole heart, I give thanks and praise to God the Father and the Lord Jesus for bestowing his wonderful gift to me, the gift of life. Amen. Amen.